Hello, hello, hello. <laughs>think of the outdoor, the uh, outpost uh, outdoor education camp at McMaster the the central philosophy for me the, the number one philosophy is a uh, to borrow from uh, Nils Farland and um, Norwegian outdoor educator the thought that's so stuck with me is first there must be joy so my my great worry is that uh, people are uh, quite removed from the natural world and to go out into a camp setting and to be exposed to good natural history and good adventure education uh, and risk education uh, is a, a bit of a problem if we haven't yet experienced that simply joy of being in the out of doors. So that becomes the primary goal and that actually can be presented in a way with, with a solid curriculum. We actually have a curriculum around joy in nature and, and a big question then falls out is not the toughest rapid or not the biggest portage um, but how well we dwell in the earth together and we're quite cognizant of that. One of the things that we work for towards in this camp is to create the idea of, of nature first. The idea being that uh, it's at the beginning of these camps, it's, it's the social intensity is, is, is overwhelming as people feel, each, feel the setting out and try to uh, find their place. Um, and in that first night, it can be very quick that we lose touch of where we are. So there's a place-based component to the camp where we're trying to instill a knowledge of the local history of the area and also that sort of simple joy of dwelling and being in the area. It's a different environment for people. I've had uh, students who've been afraid to swim in the lake. Um, certainly I've had students that have been afraid to drink the water in the lake. And um, there's uh, a lot to learn and it can be learned just by living well in the environment. One of the main things that I got out of the camp was um, the amazing friendships that I made. I was fortunate enough to be allowed into this field trip because like, I'm not a kin student and I emailed Bob and he let me join the class and that was really great and I didn't really know anybody going into the trip and I just found like the kinds of people that were on the trip, um, it just attracted a certain kind of person, like someone that was willing to like learn and wanted to be in the outdoors and like open-minded and just everybody, the feeling that I got from it, everybody just genuinely like wanted to be your friend and like wanted to experience like the outdoors with you and I don't know, it's just, I made some really incredible bonds and they'll last with me forever like I just had such an amazing time. It's a, a learning curve on um, a in terms of a friendship and a personal relationship with yourself as well. I think um, just being out of your element, everybody's really their genuine self. And um, I think not all of us knew each other going into the trip, so it was a little, everyone was a little bit nervous, but it was really, we all hit it off right away. We were all really, um, everyone was really down to earth and like we just got to know each other. And, and through bouncing things off of each other, I feel like I, I got a better sense of who I was. And I know we were only away for a little bit, but it uh, definitely had you look inward. It was really cool. I wasn't fair, I wasn't nice, but now I've got myself together. When I promise to be better, you say, I believe you will. When I get asked the question about how you organize staff or how you would bring a staff member in or what's central to your philosophy that has you hiring staff, uh, we in North America, we, we have a standard approach that uses hard and soft skills. Hard skills, of course, are the technical skills, may it be first aid or travel skills that you need to travel. And soft skills are those inter and intrapersonal skills. The skills you have to guide a trip and the skills you, ha skills you have to work with people in the out of doors and to help people work together in the out of doors. The piece that tends to be missing in there is what I've started calling the warm and green skills. And the warm skills are those skills that the staff member brings to the group where they know quote, a way, a way of being and dwelling well in the bush, a way of presenting a warm environment that is engaging and that puts nature in a place that nature is home and that the place where they're traveling is a place that is providing and comforting and good and that's central and I call that a warm skill and that's the guide skill 
at, at creating an atmosphere or an ambiance uh, that is uh, comfortable and engaging in a, in a friendly, gentle environment. I think I'd do it differently if I was uh, tripping in the high Arctic uh, or, or tripping in extreme mountain conditions. But I'm tripping in the Canadian Shield, I think a very providing and gentle environment. The other skill is a green skill. And uh, that's the skill of being able to be a, a natural interpreter, to be in, interpreting where you are, both in terms of the heritage of the area and in terms of the environment as a whole, in terms of what's here, um, what kind of wood would we use for a fire in this setting, uh, who traveled here before, what was life like for them. We are arriving on a beautiful beach. Would this be the kind of beach that would have had an encampment for thousands and thousands of years? Uh, would we, is this the kind of beach where you walk the beach thinking that you might find an arrowhead? Is this the kind of beach where surveyors would have stopped in the year 1900 when in our area they first went through? So this becomes those green skills. And uh, I think that the hard and soft skills that I mentioned at the beginning here are skills that come with the traveling. It's, it's expected that there'll be some uh, challenges and some difficulties, that there'll be some, some joys of a beautiful morning. It's also expected, I think, that there'll be some group challenges of working together uh, and, and being in a group and you'll feel it sometimes nervous and uh, you'll be challenged in terms of your own limits and potentials. I think those things are a given. So when I bring up warm and green, I'm talking about those skills uh, a bit beyond, not, not the given skills, the skills that push it a little bit further. Yeah, like the whole staff dynamic definitely contributes to the experience um, because every like trip leader had something different to offer. Um, like, like in tea ceremonies, for instance, ceremony. like Dave. Yeah. Dave. Dave was really inspirational. Like everyone definitely brought them to the group. But like, such an amazing staff. The whole concept of being on trip and not having any idea like what time it was like you're not scheduled to get up at a certain time like you get up when the sun rises you have breakfast you eat lunch you stop when you're hungry like I think that's really important to the whole trip in general just because you kind of step outside of like Western society like just for like a few days like the idea of like always being on a schedule and like going through your day like just this regimented kind of process and it's not yeah it is it's it's totally like free flowing it's not like that on the trip and that's something that I really like came to enjoy and mm -hmm. I don't wear watch anymore so <laughs> I don't know if that says anything different like not being in a classroom setting I guess um, like being out in the wilderness with like these new friends that you have made it really makes for an incredible experience like you're meeting getting to know people on a deeper like more intimate level um, it's organic like it's, yeah. it's something that's completely left field but it's, it's refreshing it's, it's a different approach to learning I think the fact that the way the classroom environment is set up everybody it is really relaxed and it's not just like a professor like Bob or Deb like dictating to the class it's really interactive and I think that that definitely helps in the learning process we're still like integrating the outdoors even though we're back in class and like I don't know I think that that's great because it's unlike any class that I've ever taken when we went to Two's Falls a few weeks ago like, I went back like the very next week with a friend to go for a hike and I would have never known about that if we hadn't gone on a field trip so one of the things that I really liked about the trip was um, the way that they integrated readings. Um, there were quite a few. Um, there was one in particular that I really liked about getting lost in time. And uh, I was really impressed. Bob often just had things memorized. Uh, one of my favorite moments was uh, our last portage at the end. Bob recited um, a quote. I can't think of it now. But um, we, we stood after the quote and reflected and uh, just shared five minutes of silence together and uh, it wasn't awkward at all and it wasn't planned, it was just uh, there and it was really, it's something that I'll carry with me forever and it was definitely a moment, it was, it was really great.